Hey y'all, Rural Readiness here. So, there's no bread at the store. So I'm going to make some. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there's no bread at the store. So I watch living traditions homestead and they put out a recipe for bread that i tried and i kind of had to tweak it to make it fit my situation i don't have a kitchen aid and i don't buy milk i'm going to show you the kind of milk that i use i'm not a milk drinker uh, I never have been. I've never been one to drink milk, even if it's ice cold. So, buying milk is not something that I do on a regular basis. I have, in the past, um, if I needed milk for a particular recipe or for, per, for a particular reason, I would buy like a small container or just enough milk to do what I wanted to do and that's it so I don't buy milk on a regular basis so when you have a recipe that calls for milk you have to kind of think outside the box so that's what I'm going to show you today um, I'm going to show you how I make bread and how I've tweaked the recipe just a little bit um, to fit my situation so I'm going to bring you closer and show you how I do this. Okay, I've got all of my ingredients um, out that I use to make bread. And the milk that I was talking about, this is what I keep on hand um, when I need milk for a recipe or whatever reason. I like this milk because it's in a storable container and it's whole milk it's not non-fat milk it's a whole milk and it only takes a quarter cup of this powder to eight ounces of water to make the equivalent of milk so this is what I'm going to use in my bread recipe like I said, I keep it on hand, and it this container has lasted me a long time. And that's even with making bread on a regular basis now. Um, it lasts a long time. You don't use a lot of it at a time. So it's a good thing, in my opinion, and I like this milk. I like the way it tastes in my recipes. Okay, so here I've got plain, unbleached flour. And I've got in my jar here um, CG cane sugar. Um, they say that it's organic, but you know, what is organic these days, right? So it's white sugar. That's the sugar that I use. This is the yeast that I use. It's actually a bread machine yeast that I got by accident. So um, I've had it for a long time. I keep it in the refrigerator, but it's worked perfectly for me. Even though it says bread machine yeast, I still use it. Just regular great value salt. I've got an egg. I've got um, two tablespoons of oil. And the milk um, I mix up in this container and just warm it a little bit. Uh, your milk needs to be warm. Um, not hot or it'll kill your yeast but just warm you know if you put your finger in it or whatever you don't feel it one way or the other it's kind of like back in the day when when you were heating a baby bottle and you put it on the inside of your wrist to test the temperature of the milk and you didn't feel it one way or the other same way with bath water for a baby you test it on the inside of your wrist if you can't feel it one way or the other then it's a good temperature okay so I'm going to start putting my ingredients together 
and I'm going to start with my dry ingredients first. Um, I'm going to put the salt last, but I'm going to start with the flour. So I'm going to put in here two and a half cups of flour to begin with. So I started with two and a half cups of flour. It's probably going to be a little sticky, but you're going to incorporate more flour when you pull it out on the countertop to knead it. Um, so I'm just starting with two and a half cups. So I'm going to get two teaspoons of yeast and put in here. And when I get through with my yeast, I put it back in the refrigerator. So that's where I keep it. So I'm going to get two tablespoons of sugar. So I've got all my ingredients in here and I'm just going to give it a, a quick mix, get everything mixed up together. So I've got two tablespoons of cooking oil. You can use whatever kind of oil you want. Um, this is sunflower oil. Um, I like to use olive oil and season my bread with like an Italian seasoning for a pizza crust. It's, it's really good that way. So I've got one egg. I'm going to crack it in this bowl so I can whisk it up before I add it. And I'm just going to I'm just going to whisk it up with a fork before I add it to the flour. So now I'm going to add the warm milk and I've got one cup of warm milk here. And I'm just giving it a kind of a mix. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to mix it up. And it's going to be kind of wet and sticky, but that's okay. And I like using a rubber spoon. So as I'm mixing it up, I can clean the inside of the bowl. Get everything raked off the side of the bowl. And as I'm pulling it, you see it kind of pulls away from the side of the bowl. And that's all I do. So I'm going to sprinkle some flour on my counter. And I'm going to pull this dough out of the bowl and onto the counter. It's really, it's a wet dough. So you want to make sure you have enough flour on your counter 
to where your dough doesn't stick to the counter. This is my dough scraper that I use. It's not really a dough scraper, but it works really well. So <clears throat> I'm going to have that on hand. If it does stick to the counter, you want to make sure that you're generous with the flour. Um, because like I said, it's a wet dough, so you don't want it to stick. So I'm, I'm, I'm fairly generous with the flour that I put on the countertop. And then, I'm going to just pull the dough, cleaning the side of the bowl as I go. And plop it right out on the counter in the middle of the of the flour. Cleaning the inside of the bowl as I go. I'm going to take a little bit of flour, sprinkle it on my hands and on top of the dough ball. And begin pulling it, folding it. It's a really soft dough. Keep your flour coming. And it doesn't it doesn't take very long to get this dough really smooth. And all the time you're picking up flour from your counter, from your surface. So that's why it's okay when you bring it out of the bowl that it's a little wet because you're picking up this flour as you need it. So if you went ahead and done the three cups of flour to begin with, it could end up being a little dry. By the time you get it ready to rest. So that's why it's okay that it's a little wet to begin with. So I'm going to set it in the middle of the flour and I'm going to cover it with a towel and I'm going to let it rest for about 10 minutes. And I'll bring you back. Alright, so 
It's actually been a little longer than 10 minutes, but that's okay. Um, I got busy working on my kombucha. Um, put it together in the bottle in it and flavoring it. This is what this one looks like. This is a blueberry, strawberry, raspberry mixed berry flavor. Is that not gorgeous? I made a strawberry. Made a mango. So, I've got them in the bottles. I just bottled them today. And I'm going to give them about three days to carbonate. And then I'll have a delicious drink that's carbonated. And it's good for you. I love it. Anyway, if anybody's interested in that, comment down below um, if you want to see the process on the kombucha. And I'll do a video on that. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to separate this dough into rolls. Um, this dough can be used to make hamburger buns, hot dog buns, bread, like a loaf of bread, or uh, dinner rolls, or, or whatever, right? So... I'm going to kind of fold it, knead it for just a minute. I don't have a uh, bread cutter thing, so that's why I use this big knife because it, it cuts the dough really well. <clears throat> so I'm going to sprinkle some more flour. on my counter and I'm going to flatten this out and then <laughs> when I make rolls okay it irritates me when I can't get them the same size like I like all my rolls to be even so what I've done is I've got a kitchen scale right I'm gonna put this right here and I'm going to separate this. And I've got this big pizza pan that I'm going to put my rolls on and let them rise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to flatten this out and then I'm going to try to divide them and get all my rolls even. And it's sticky on the inside, so when I cut it, I just kind of dip it so it's not sticky. And I'm going to weigh them so I get them all even. Because I just like it. I like it better that way. So these are going to be kind of big. Um, kind of almost like a bun. 120. 102. 109. 111. So this one just needs a little pinch over there. 116. Okay, that'll work. So I've got them kind of even. <clears throat> so then I'm going to take them and kind of roll them to the center like that and 
and kind of flatten them out a little bit. You know, like so. Put them on my pan, just like that. So those of you that have seen my biscuit making video, it's kind of the way I do biscuits, roll and tuck, to get them in the right shape. And then for these, I just kind of want to flatten them out a little bit. Roll and tuck, roll and tuck. So it's going to end up being eight rolls. Rolls slash buns. But it just depends on how you divide the dough. You can make them smaller and make more. Or make them a little bit larger and make less. So I'm going to end up with eight. But... They would kind of end up being like a sandwich, kind of, sort of. Ninety-five, one hundred three, one twelve, one thirty-five. So this one, I'm going to take a pinch. Put it over here. And 26. 106. I know I have issues, but you know, it is what it is. I kind of want them in the same general size. So roll and tuck, roll and tuck. And as you roll it, it'll get kind of sticky. And I just kind of pick up some flour. Roll and tuck. So, <clears throat> that's what they look like. So I'm going to um, cover them again and let them rise until they're doubled in size and it usually takes 30 maybe 45 minutes depending on your temperature and I'm gonna let these rise and I will bring you back alright so they have risen quite a bit look at that oh my god it's freaking wonderful so I'm gonna set my oven to uh, about 375 nice big these could almost be buns right they ended up rising for about 45 minutes I could let them keep rising and they probably end up like this big but this is good. This is a good size. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to preheat my oven to 375 and I'm going to put them in there. And it normally it takes around 15 or 20 minutes for them to, to cook and get deliciousness all over them. And um, they're so soft. I'm going to bring you back when I take them out of the oven, but we're going to preheat 375 and I'll put them in there and cook them for about 15, 20 minutes. I start checking them at 15 because I don't, I don't want them too brown, but uh, I want some, some golden goodness on them. And then I'll bring you back when I bring them out. All right. So 15 minutes and this is what we got. Look at that. The 
it's hot tamale, I know that. Alright, look at that. That is freaking awesomeness. There's the bottom. So, hot. Hot. Oh my goodness. So guess what? Guess what this needs? This needs butter. How about some extra, extra creamy salted butter? The heck yes. It's going to be nice. Deliciousness. I'm trying to open my package without messing my little block of butter up. I like Kerrygold butter, but <clears throat> they didn't have Kerrygold butter, so I got this instead. I cut the oven off? Yes, I did. I'm going to make some slices in the butter. Give me a couple of pieces. Josh came over here a while ago and he was like, I'm ready for some bread. It's like, it ain't done yet, boy. <clears throat> okay. These are still super hot. But, I'm going to show you the inside of this loveliness. Ooh, mercy. There you go. So, I'm going to take these pieces of butter that I sliced and set them, if I can pick them up, on top of here, just like so. You hear that breathing creature behind me? <laughs> so that's Callie. She's like, hey, hey. <laughs> and I'm going to close it up and let that butter get all melty and good. And then I'm going to chow down. Heck yes. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm fixing to eat my roll and uh, have some deliciousness. And uh Hope you give this recipe a try because it's really it's a really good one. So that's it for me, and until next time, I'll see you later.